Well, today is World Stroke Day, and stroke remains one of the medicine's greatest challenges. The most serious ones are brain hemorrhages, like the one Eric Sarno suffered at age 36. The Ironman triathlete wrote a book about his experience and his recovery with the help of Madison columnist Doug Moe. The book is called Stroke Runner, My Story of Stroke, Survival, Recovery, and Advocacy. And Eric Sarno is our guest today. Eric, so nice to see you. Welcome to Live at Four. Thanks for being here. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about this remarkable story of yours. This happened 12 years ago, and I understand you were already in the hospital when you suffered your stroke. Tell yeah. us what happened. Well, I'd been having some back pain, and I was being treated for that condition, and um, so they admitted me just for observation at once was Meritor Hospital. I think, is it still Meritor yeah. Hospital? Yeah, I think um, so. so I was there overnight, and I was getting ready to go home the next day, and I was showering, and next thing you know, I had some, what we consider some of the symptoms of stroke. I had some numbness and tingling on the left side, some twitching, and then I just kind of collapsed in the shower and had a seizure. Uh, on the floor in the bathroom. Did you know what was happening? Um, I thought to myself, I, I might be having a stroke. I don't know. I mean, I just, you know, I probably read some some of the warning signs of that someplace, and um, it was uh, kind of a surreal experience at the time. But at 36 <laughs> and being a Iron Man. an Ironman triathlete, is that what mm -hmm. you thought? this might be a stroke, I would think that would be the furthest thing from your mind. Right, you would think so, but the, it just came out of nowhere. I mean, that, and it was numbness, and it was, so it was very, the signs and symptoms of stroke, I, I was, it was certainly one side of the body, numbness, so that was something certainly that, you know, I was feeling and experienced, so, um, you know, I, so many things rush through your mind, but, it, you know, it's so funny during that whole process. I mean, even the seizure, I was, I was conscious, and um, a lot of it I, I remember until I, you know, until I was eventually passed out, I think. And time is, is of the essence when you're having a stroke. Certainly time is of the essence. And fortunately for me, I was not only in a hospital. Now the hospital I was in, though, wasn't able to do the care I needed because I needed neurosurgery. So I was just happened to be up the hill from University of Wisconsin hospitals and clinics where they, you know, have multiple brain surgeons there. And fortunately, I was uh, off down the hill and, and put in the care of some uh, very very thorough neurosurgeons. Wow. Well, what made you decide to write a book about this? Well, it was kind of the encouragement, not only from my medical team, but friends and family. And, and then eventually, after I started to recover, they started to ask me to speak to families and patients. And so once I started doing that, I was encouraged more and more that, you know, more people need to hear this. And I, I was asked by different hospitals and um, places to come. I did some speaking in Michigan to some stroke survivors and their families. And then I did some grand rounds for some doctors at some hospitals. And so it was kind of like it's such a rare blood clot you had then to survive that and then the different infections. And, you know, the story just goes on and on. So it, I guess it does make for a book after a while. You shouldn't be here. Right, I guess. For all intents and purposes. I, I mean, everything you went through. Yeah, I, you know, I'm told that every now and then. If you read the literature, everything is such a high mortality rate. And so that's why it's, you know, it's very important for me that I, I, I like to share. I think my new group of friends and family are stroke survivors and, and their caregivers. It's, it's important to be able to it, it, at least let them know what I know and give them my experiences. And, you know, when we were in the hospital, it was my group of fellow runners and triathletes, and we're all in our early 30s, and everybody's in the waiting room thinking, how can someone in their 30s, this, this isn't supposed to happen to us. And that's you know? why the book is going to help so many people. Right. It Hopefully. really will. But now it's not available right now, is that right? Uh, I don't think you can order a hardcover yet, but you can um, download it. Oh, on the all ebook the is available. Yes, okay. so through Apple, Kindle, I think, through Amazon, things like that. Well, it's great having you here today. Congratulations on the book. And continued good health. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Eric. There's more to come at four, including a spooky Halloween forecast that could bring more snow to the area. And speaking of snow, the first snow of the year has some people already thinking about skiing and snowboarding. They love it. Coming up tonight at five, how one local ski hill is getting ready for more flakes to fly. That's coming up at five.